morning and welcome to Rising. We've got an awesome show for you today because the lovely Jessica Burbank is joining me in studio. Nice to see you, Jess. It is great to be here, Robbie. We are so great to have you. All right, let's get to our top story. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito not recusing himself from January 6th related cases after a pair of flags flown at his homes has spurred controversy. We're going to get into that. But first, letters sent to lawmakers on Wednesday have Alito writing, quote, the two incidents you cite do not meet the conditions for recusal. As I have stated publicly, I had nothing whatsoever to do with the flying of those flags. I was not even aware of the upside down flag until it was called to my attention. Now, Representative Jamie Raskin is not at all satisfied with that explanation and has written an op-ed for the New York Times calling on the Justice Department to ask the other seven justices to compel Alito and also Justice Clarence Thomas to recuse themselves from this case. He writes, I look forward to seeing seven members of the court act to defend the reputation and integrity of the institution. The scrutiny of Alito follows reporting from the New York Times on two flags that were flown at the Alito residences, one being on the upside down American flag and the other being a pine tree appeal to heaven flag, which some contend has become synonymous with the Stop the Steal movement. Alito has blamed the upside down flag episode on his wife, Martha Ann, claiming it was her response to a liberal neighbor with whom she was feuding. The justice is getting dragged on X for essentially throwing his wife under the bus. Moms on Demand, Shannon Watts, posted on X, quote, Justice Alito, when it comes to his wife, she makes her own decisions, and I've always respected her right to do so. Justice Alito, when it comes to other women's decisions about their own bodies, go F yourselves. Left-leaning commentator Tristan Snell responded, quote, Maybe someday American women will have as many rights over their bodies as Martha Ann Alito has over her flagpoles. And Berkeley professor Robert Reich posted, quote, Justice Alito must be impeached. He has now refused to recuse himself from the cases related to the January 6th insurrection, even after flying two pro-insurrection flags outside his homes. He must be impeached if the high court is to retain any legitimacy. But many conservatives are coming to Alito's defense and are questioning whether the flags are actually symbolic of the Stop the Steal movement. They point out that many groups, including Black Lives Matter, have used the Appeal to Heaven flag as well. In fact, an Appeal to Heaven flag was flown over the San Francisco Capitol for decades. It was removed just this week. And that's my bottom line here. I, I feel like this is being, I, I use the language on, on social media, retconned, that these flags have necessarily something to do with the Stop the Steal movement. Yes, they were definitely flown, as was the American flag and the Don't Tread on Me flag and a you know, bunch of other patriotic symbols. I understand that people who think the election was Ill illegitimate have tried to appropriate very, like, uh, uh, example, uh, patriotic um, flags and those kinds of things. but. The, the appeal to heaven flag goes back to, you know, 1776 has been used as a, is about the, the right of man to appeal to a higher power in times of injustice and has been used for all sorts of causes. Does, did Alito mean it in a stop the steal way? I guess that's possible, but absent additional information or, or proof that that's the case, um, it, it, this is a, again, San Francisco has this flag. It's not because they think um, the election was stolen from Trump, but because it's been a generic kind of symbol of the republic for 200 years. I think to think it's just about the flag is to miss the forest for the trees. I think people are upset because they know that Alito's wife, Martha Ann, likes Donald Trump. They know oh. that her position on this election is one of believing that it was stolen. Well, well I don't and know. So, Claire, now, Clarence Thomas's wife, yes. I, I don't know what, uh, uh, Ginny Thomas is very much on the record as being involved in that, fine. I, I don't know what Mrs. Alito's views are, but go ahead. But I think many people have deduced that that is what she believes. And so the flags being flown at the home, there's this assumption that, okay, so there must be some conversation between her and her husband about their political views if she's displaying them at their residence, which I think means that he either respects that view, which is concerning, considering he's a Supreme mm -hmm. Court justice making a decision about January 6th, or he agrees with it. I mean, the fundamental question here now is, can you be in a married relationship with someone when you don't respect their political views? Because that has to be what's happening here for him to not feel good about well, losing himself. 
I mean, okay, that is possible. Just, you know, by the way, there are married people who don't agree. Uh, who are, I mean, there are, you know, we hear about the Democrat-Republican political matchups. Um, maybe increasingly that's fraught for if you're dating, you don't want to date someone who has, the, who has different political views than you do. But we, we know that's the case and those relationships exist and they just, you know, avoid talking about it. So I, I don't know. I mean, look, obviously... I think Alito, Thomas, the rest of uh, it, Elena Kagan, Hanji Brown Jackson, all of them have political views. Mm -hmm. it, it would be totally naive, and you probably agree with this, to pretend that the justices don't like have their own political views and political preferences. Right. Um, you know, they're not just totally neutral blank slates. I mean, that would be impossible because no one is like that. So they're definitely political people, and it just doesn't. It's, it's no different. I don't think it's any different than any of the others having political views. Like, you recuse yourself, you know, if you have a financial conflict of interest in the case or something like that, sure. But just the fact that he has his own, like, preference that Donald Trump would be the president, I don't see why you would recuse yourself over that. Or they'd all have to recuse themselves over everything. I want to know more about the feud with the neighbor because the feud with the neighbor. Allegedly, it was over offensive yard signs that the neighbor had in her house. I really want to know precisely what those yard signs were. I can tell you what they were. It's so passive aggressive. It was a there was a it was an F Trump okay. sign that was uh, that Mrs. Alito thought was too close to a bus stop for kids, and the kids were going to see a bad word, and she didn't like that. Look, there's a whole New York Times story on this that I don't think comes off as particularly sympathetic to either party, but mm -hmm. certainly not to the neighbor. So the neighbor is, um, and actually the, the, the neighbor, there's nothing wrong with her, she's an older lady, but she had her like liberal daughter come live with her during mm -hmm. the pandemic and the, the daughter's boyfriend, and they were like very politically active and they did all these signs and, uh, and Mrs. Lita didn't like it and did it. I mean, it's kind of funny that this is like turning into a should he recuse himself from these important issues is, is literally a dispute with a neighbor that anyone could have. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. And Raskin saying that they can force his recusal, it's an interesting argument, but I don't think any of the other justices are gonna be down for that because then this no. is gonna be a tit for tat situation. They, they probably know things about each other's personal lives and what cases they probably shouldn't weigh in on. Yeah, I don't, and again, if, if like, let's say, let's say one of the liberal justices had a Black Lives Matter flag at their house or a pride flag or what I wouldn't say that they need to recuse themselves. Um, so I just find it all a little silly, but you know, I, I, like Elena Kagan is, um, is, a, is a professor or, or has served as a professor, I don't know if she's currently teaching, affiliated with Harvard University and she didn't recuse herself in the, uh, in the affirmative action case for, for Harvard University, which honestly, I don't really care about, it's, it's fine. So I think this whole thing is a little overblown, but um, you know, people can have whatever views of it that they want. I mean, even in Raskin's writing, it seems like a legal gray area. He's saying that the DOJ can petition the other justices to essentially force under law. I mean, they, they can petition them, sure. Right? They just don't right. have to do anything about it. Right, exactly. It's like the United Nations, everything is extremely non-binding yeah. unless the country with the biggest weapons can enforce because it. the people who ultimately decide whether you can force them to do anything is the Supreme Court itself. Right, unfortunately what we're learning in this moment in politics at the international level and at the legal level with these cases, mm -hmm. is that the law only exists so much as it can be enforced and there's someone willing to enforce it. Like strongman law is very much at play here in this case. It's at play in the Middle East right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's scary for a lot of people. They want to believe we have rule of law, but Andrew Jackson not. once said, the Supreme Court has made its decision, now let them enforce it. Mm. More rising <laughs> right after this.